What's up everybody, Ivy Ross here, and I am doing my first book club. I wanted to do a book club on this book here called From Here to Equality uh, by William Darity and Kirsten Mullen. These authors are, you know, just amazing. They've just done a ton of homework on the fight, you know, towards reparations uh, for ADOS, American Descendants of Slavery. This book is a book that should be, you know, at like university lectures and, you know, every level of education, you know, um, especially in high school, you know, this should be referenced. I mean, this is like, you know, so detailed, you know, reparations is one of those conversations that I feel a lot of us have just avoided um, because we just don't know enough or are too afraid. But like when you read books like this, you have the data, you have the data, you have the history behind it. And it's just crazy. Oh yeah, this right here, this is uh, the Black American heritage flag. I wanna, you know, rep Black American as much as I can, you know, for my people, you know, for my lineage, you know, something that I'm proud of is something that, you know, any ADOS should be proud of that they built this country, that their family, uh, you know, their blood is, you know, in this soil and they help build the richest country in the world. So, uh, you know, I feel that once we really start loving ourselves more of who we are, the deeper we get into advocating for ourselves politically. I'm planning on, I wanna do this weekly. I wanna do this weekly uh, the best that I can while I'm dropping other videos and, you know, trying to stay as busy as possible. I'm gonna start with introduction. Let's do it. Introduction, standing at the crossroads. So this begins, racism and discrimination have perpetually crippled black economic opportunities at several historic moments. The trajectory of racial inequality could have been altered dramatically, but at each juncture, the road chosen did not lead to a just and fair America. Um, this is all on page one, you know, if people are following along. I'm not gonna go word for word here. I'm not gonna go word for word, I'm just gonna do an overview. What stood out to me? From Here to Equality is a book primarily about the economic divide between black and white Americans, how it came to be and how it can be eliminated. Specifically, we contend a suitably designed program of reparations can close the divide. Black reparations can place America squarely on the path to racial equality. And that's the goal. That's what we all want to do, right? That's all we want to do. So, okay. So on page two, I'm going to read what stood out to me here. One of the country's earliest efforts to dramatically alter Blacks' economic condition was the federal government's post-Civil War plan to give at least 40 acres of abandoned and confiscated land as well as mule to each formerly enslaved family of four or 10 acres per person, right? So while some maintain that this planned payment of land to newly freed men and women in the 19th century is a figment of the black imagination. So, you know, they're, they're trying to say that, you know, there's people saying, oh, America never promised 40 acres and a mule, right? They're saying that's part of the, uh, you know, figment of the black imagination. But historical records confirm that the promise of reparations was not a myth. It was inscribed in federal legislation in fact, the allocation activated in 1865, 40 acres for formerly enslaved Africans was at least a second such measure the federal government had developed to assign land to the formal chattel. Right there, it is historically recorded that we were supposed to get 40 acres and a mule. You know, so I always think like, you know, what, where would we be right now if that happened? You know, if we did become, you know, citizens, you know, uh, that benefited from the, the, you know, fruits of our labor. Um, and if we didn't have all those crazy laws, Jim Crow laws, redlining, if racist ass politicians and, and racist white folks left us alone and let us prosper, you know, like every American citizen, you know, where would we be right now, right? So this book, this first introduction kind of breaks down. I mean, the whole book breaks down where we could have been, but we chose not to go that way, right? So I'm gonna continue here. Uh, reparations are a program of acknowledgement, redress, and closure for grievous injustice. 
where African Americans are concerned, the grievous injustice that makes the case for reparations includes slavery, legal segregation, Jim Crow, and ongoing discrimination and stigmatization, right? And so they call it ARC. It's the acronym that stands for Acknowledgement, Redress, and Closure. Acknowledgement, Redress, and Closure are components of any effective reparations project. So uh, we'll go into, you know, we'll break down each one. So, you know, acknowledgement involves recognition and admission of the wrong by the perpetrators or beneficiaries of the justice. You know, so a lot of people, you know, they want to say, oh, we never, we never owned slaves. You know, my family came here after slavery. You know, why do we have to deal with this now? Because we're also talking about the beneficiaries. We have to talk about that. You know, that is also important. We can't just ignore like oh yeah we're only going after people who own slaves like no that's not the, the point the point is that there are people who benefited and there were people who who didn't benefit and we were the only ones who had who did not benefit from hundreds of years of, of free labor that's acknowledgement that's saying hey we acknowledge this that's that's the beginning right and then redress redress potentially can take two forms so there's restitution or atonement. So restitution is the restoration of survivors to their condition before the injustice occurred or to a condition they might have attained had the injustice not taken place. You know, us being whole, shoot, it feels like there was never a time where we were just like, as far as like on American soil. So of course it is impossible to restore those who were enslaved to a condition preceding their enslavement not only because those who were enslaved are now deceased, but also because many thousands were born into slavery, right? But it is possible to move their descendants toward a more equitable position with the status they would have attained in the absence of the injustices. Alternative form of redress occurs when perpetrators or beneficiaries meet conditions of forgiveness that are acceptable to the victims. Achieving these elements of a reparations program requires good faith negotiations between those who are wronged and the wrongdoers. So it has to be sincere. You know, this conversation has to be sincere. Uh, specifically restitution for African-Americans, ADOS, would eliminate racial disparities in wealth, income, education, health, sentencing, and incarceration, political participation, and subsequent opportunities to engage in American political and social life. So just us gaining citizenship. Uh, so closure, we'll talk about closure. So closure involves mutual reconciliation between African-Americans and the beneficiaries of slavery, legal segregation, and ongoing discrimination towards blacks. Whites and blacks would come to terms over the past, confront the present, and unite to create a new and transformed United States of America. Once the reparations program is executed and racial inequality eliminated, African Americans would make no further claims for race specific policies on their behalf from the American government on the assumption that no new race specific injustices are inflicted upon them. And I always think about conversations that, you know, white people have said over the years saying, hey, you know, slavery was in the past. Like, let's let it go. Like, let's just let it go. Right. But if there was no acknowledgement and, and, and uh, you know, proper restitution for this crime and injustice that happened over years, how can we? How can we forget when we are living the consequences? Black Americans are living the consequences right now. Once reparations happens, we won't ever have to talk about that. We can actually move into a post-racial society. And I, I don't know, I just love that idea of a post-racial society because to me, what that means is that America and everyone has uh, shown their respect for the for the you know American descendants of slaves because addressing and giving reparations means that you know everyone's acknowledged this group has put their lives their whole entire lives for generations to build this country for free you deserve everything that kind of attitude and respect that would change the whole world this would inspire so many people you know to do the right thing and pressure their politicians to do the right thing. A central theme of From Here to Equality is the sustained American failure to recognize the pernicious impact of white supremacy and the sustained American failure to adopt 
national policies that reversed the effects of white supremacy. At each point that the nation stood at a critical crossroads with respect to its racial future, it chose the wrong fork. And so, you know, that's why, you know, I'm, I'm just so weary about everything I, I, I read, you know, especially, you know, centered around this Black Lives Matter movement, because historically we've come to moments where we could have chose the right path and we don't. And so we are in a moment right now where the conversation of reparations is happening and we have so many other distractions, you know, and, and, and politicians are trying to do a bait and switch. You know, they're trying to replace our reparations claim with something else that isn't for us. And they do it every single time. And, you know, hopefully with our education and our uh, wisdom, we can catch this and, and not fall for the okie dokie again. Page five here. Uh, so from here, from here to equality, uh, the case we build in this volume is based on all tiers or phases of injustices. Slavery, American apartheid, which is Jim Crow, and the combined effects of present day discrimination and the ongoing deprecation of black lives. Most advocates of black reparations have focused exclusively on the injustice of slavery as a basis for redress. Uh, you know, and I wanted to also highlight because it's kind of this book in the beginning, it kind of breaks down every chapter. I don't want to do that. I kind of want to like walk through it like in each video. But the final part of the book consists of two chapters and provides a springboard to the design and implementation of a plan for black reparations. Chapter 12 constitutes a systemic, systematic response to reparations critics while chapter 13 outlines the potential structure of an actual reparations program. These last two chapters taken together supply a systematic, I keep wanting to say systemic, I don't know why, I, I guess I just jump between systemic and systematic. So I don't know if there's a difference, but so, you know, you know what that tells me is that this book is not just a book where you're like, oh, Wow, that's such good information. I learned so much. I I love books that actually is talking about a solution, you know, saying, hey, these are the solutions that we have. You know, I see a lot of people talking, a lot of people making books, but no one's really making solutions, at least not that I know of. You know, I remember I, like I was reading this book. Shoot. What's this book called, man? I was reading this book, Why Fragility. Um, I didn't finish it. Uh, but I don't know if it, you know, really kind of talks about a solution overall. It's just kind of telling people, telling white people to just be better people. But, you know, I appreciate it. Now, in your process of becoming better people, you can advocate for reparations. Awesome. Yes, I support it. This is the last page of the introduction. Uh, so blacks continue to bear the weight of American racism, pretty much. The burden is manifest in labor market discrimination grossly attenuated wealth, confinement to neighborhoods with lower levels of amenities. Oh man, I hate that word, Amini amenities. Hope I said that right. Disproportionate exposure to inferior schooling, significantly greater danger in encounters with the police and the criminal justice system in large, and a general social disdain for the value of black people's lives. The legal apparatus created by the civil rights revolution does little to address the complex web of harms imposed upon black Americans today. Taken individually, any of these three tiers of injustice, slavery, the regime of legal segregation and subordination and current discrimination makes a powerful case for black reparations. Taken collectively, they are impossible to ignore. So, that's the introduction. I want to, you know, I want to start stop there. Hopefully you guys can get this book and, you know, order it on Amazon. I believe it's in stock. I know it's a I know it's a bestseller book. So, you know, we'll hopefully hopefully you can get it. I got it. And, you know, just do this weekly. So, you know, when you guys get the book, you guys can jump on it, catch up to chapter 2 or 3, whatever I'm at. So, anyways, make sure you subscribe. Uh, make sure you like this video. Make sure you hit the bell. So, but yes, other than that, it's Ivy Ross. Um, and you guys have a great rest of your day. From here to equality, peace.